roots mean something for me to continuously explore. Choosing a Filipino name is a return to my Filipino roots. I'm Andrew, but I, from now on, change my name to be Anne. So call me Anne. Right at the beginning, it was a lot about my own personal roots, about understanding what our own culture is about. Uh, also because I come from, you know, Punjabi and a Bengali culture, there are like different kinds of roots and sometimes they don't even meet. But as I have grown up, I think largely it has meant for me to explore our roots as a country, as a civilization. Hey, my name is Medhavi. I'm 35 years old and I was born and brought up in Delhi. I live in Chandigarh where I work at the intersection of art, culture, heritage and digital technology. I think my professional work is all about exploring our roots. Uh, our personal roots, yes, but also our roots as a country, the traditions that we have. I just was five years old. I was really uncomfortable under my own skin. I just hated my body. I just hated it. Yeah, I just felt being a woman, being a girl, I was trapped in the wrong body for sure. I'm Anne Chakra Chutati. Everyone in Thailand, they know me as Anne Chakrapong. That is my real name and my full name, which I never change, even though I transform myself. I'm the trans woman who is the CEO of JKN Global Media Public Limited in Thailand. I'm the mother. I'm the TV host as well. I'm the celebrity myself, actress, TV presenter, investor, and I'm also the founder of my own charity. Well, I grew up in a very small rental video shop in one of the fresh market of Thailand, um, remote area Bangkok. I tried to dress on. I love walking, smelling, eating like a woman. Every breath that I take, I just would love to become a woman. And a lot of people just bully me a lot. Like, you are young, gay, queer. They did not understand. In the Philippines, we have a lot of indigenous communities and it's very common to have a Christian name and an indigenous name. Lauren Marie Sevilla Faustino, that's my birth name, but I also have a chosen name. It's Diwa Malaya. It means free spirit in Filipino. I feel like it's a part of my process of decolonization. Choosing a Filipino name is a return to my Filipino roots. I am a filmmaker, a creative, and I love to cook and I love cats. I had uh, a teacher, he was very opposed to how positive we looked at everything American. So even uh, at that age, I already had this concept of like, just because it's foreign doesn't mean it's better. I've gone to almost all our Philippine provinces. My life was happily about travel, 
it felt really aligned to be working with indigenous communities, learning from them. But I would always return to Manila and the city. I got sexual harassed by my own teacher got raped at the age of 12 years old. I never told my mom and dad. I just don't want to disappoint them. So what else I can do? In order to overcome all the bullies, I have to be damn good in front of them. So I have to be sharp, I have to be smart. That's it. So no matter what, Nothing can stop me. That is the attitude. When I was at the age of 36 years old, I just ran out from the family business and I set up my own. Then when you become successful, you can have the reward for yourself. And everyone will say, go for it. I'm happy for you. How I lived was really fast-paced. Not sleeping, also not eating well. These two worlds were really pulling at me. I held the values of indigenous peoples as an ideal, but it was really difficult to embody and live those principles in my own life. When I got sick with COVID, I would lose breath just taking five steps. I had a problem remembering things. I thought I was just going to recover here in Laguna for a while. And then when I got better, the thought of going back to Manila, I just felt like that was a very constricting way to live. For the first time in my life, I felt called to stay in place. There were still projects that were calling me to travel, to shoot. I declined, at first out of fear, then out of choice. A lot of people around me would say, oh, museums are boring. But I mean, we are the people who make culture come alive, right? I started the Heritage Lab sometime late 2015. It started uh, more as a school intervention and taking museums into classrooms. Uh, but it had also transformed into a digital platform, which was the intention. We call it a lab, so it means you engage with cultural collections and you uh, do creative things with them to make them relevant to you today. I think there is um, value in culture and for me that value comes from my roots. I feel like uh, the Lauren I was raised to be is really Catholic, always doing what is expected of me. He was more relaxed, definitely less neurotic, more attuned, more free. These two people are still working together, Lauren and Diwa, coming to a balance, healthy and aligned with ourselves. In 2018, I started to have the hormone treatment. About six months later, I went under surgery. I've been waiting for 40 years now, doctor. I cry out. And I really cry. I 
the time I woke up, it just, it was totally, totally the whole new world to me. This is my new world. I start to touch myself. God, I'm a woman. I just maintain my voice and my type. Full name, still a male name. Because I just would love to keep my own identity. When people ask me, you woman, I say no, I'm trans woman. I just don't want to hide from anyone. I'm trans woman and I'm very proud trans woman. Women are always told uh, to not do something because it's not traditionally right for them or that because they're the women, they should be doing this. But looking at women in history, women can know that it's just not true. You should hear stories of these princesses who have really crossed different lines, different boundaries to do something that they really wanted to do, broken the so-called rules of the time. Our women, young women today should know that they come from a country where women have always made good choices. Understanding these women from history would give younger women today a very uh, inspiring time to start with really.